During the interview process, many employers ask candidates to complete an assessment test before advancing to the next stage. These tests are designed to measure skills that are essential for candidate success on the job. In this video, you'll learn how to use Outlook effectively. We'll cover inbox organization, meeting scheduling, task management, and workflows that make you get ahead. Remember, Outlook isn't just for email. It's a full productivity hub for communication, calendars, and to-dos. You'll see real examples that save time and cut clutter. The goal? Help you stay on top of your day. By the end, you'll know how to unlock Outlook's best features and make a tool that actually works for you. This is online training for everyone. Let's get started. Very often, you'll find yourself with the challenge of managing an overwhelming inbox. Let me help you to take full control of your mailbox using smart filters, categories, search tools, and few power user habits. One of the most useful thing I find in Outlook is Smart Filter. If you click on the Filter Email button, you will see that you can filter by unread, has attachment, flagged, important, and a lot of other categories. I like unread, which is also available in the mailbox itself, because it allows me to focus only on the important messages that need some action. Or you can use Filter has attachments to quickly locate files from clients or teammates that included Word, PDF, or Excel documents. Using filters is one of the fastest way to declutter and prioritize, even without automation. Another valuable thing you can do is stay on top of important emails with flags. Outlook allows you to flag emails to visually mark messages that need follow-up. To flag the message, right-click on the email and select follow-up. And you now see the red flag icon on the email that requires attention. Let me tell you, you can't control your email unless you know how to search. And this is because your inbox is only useful if you can find what you need. The search bar is right here on top of the Outlook. Let's find all the emails from Neil. All you need to do is type from Colin Neil. Let's also find important emails that have alert in their subject. As you can see, Outlook also provides you some suggested searches, and you can search by categories, has attachment, and a lot of other criteria. Search filters save time, especially when you need to narrow down the results and find something quickly. You can also set up custom folders and organize based on your workflow. Let's set up folders for clients, personal, reference, job application, and then let's spend two minutes a day dragging key emails into those folders. Here's another trick. You can archive emails instead of deleting. Archive button in Outlook removes emails from your inbox but keeps them in your archive folder. This keeps your inbox clear but still lets you find anything later. And the best trick I saved for last. You need to learn how to use rules to auto-sort. When you master it, you will let Outlook sort your email for you. On the Home tab, click Rules and then click Create Rule. Here you can decide what to do when you receive an email from another recipient. You can identify them by the sender, by the subject, or by the send to. And you can decide what to do with them. You can display an alert window, play sound, or move them into designated folder. Learning rules to auto-sort, it's like hiring a free assistant for your inbox. Here's my advice. To control your inbox, use filters to slice through clutter. Tag and flag with color for visibility. Master search to retrieve what matters. Clean up conversations to stay lean. Archive instead of delete. And use folders and manual drag when automation isn't available. Take just a few minutes a day to try one or two of these tips in your mailbox. And start managing your emails like a pro. Very often, you'll find yourself needing to send the same email to multiple people. Clients, team members, or students. When you use the To or CC fields in Outlook, everyone in the list can see who else received the message. This may be fine for internal communications, but it's not ideal in many professional settings. To keep your recipient list private, Outlook offers the BCC option, Blind Carbon Copy. When you use BCC, each recipient receives the email, but no one sees who else got it. If the BCC field isn't visible by default, you will need to enable it. To enable it, you need to go to Options and select BCC. If you're using the classic ribbon, the BCC option is one of the buttons. And now you're ready to compose your message. But instead of placing addresses in the To and CC fields, add them to the BCC. What I've seen working well is people send email to themselves and then BCC important clients. Before sending, make sure to double check your message and recipients. Once you send it, each person will receive an individual looking email unaware of the others. 
This is especially useful for announcements, customer follow-ups, or sensitive messages. Using BCC helps maintain privacy and keeps your email looking personal, but overusing it, especially in internal communication, can reduce transparency. A lot of times you may need to send email to multiple recipients, but using CC or BCC in Outlook reveals other contacts or may feel impersonal. A better solution might be to use Mail Merge to send individually personalized emails to each contact without showing the full list. Mail Merge starts with the data source, usually in Microsoft Excel file. It contains the list of contacts with first name, last name, and email address columns. Each row represents one recipient. Instead of starting in Microsoft Outlook, we'll start in Microsoft Word. You need to navigate to Mailings tab and select Start Mail Merge and then Email Messages. Then you need to click Select Recipients, use the existing list, and choose your Excel file. All the information is located in the first sheet, so this is what we're going to select. Now you can write your email message directly in Microsoft Word. Don't forget to add your signature from Outlook. You can also use Merge fields like First Name to personalize the greeting. To do it, you need to find the right location for the field. Click on the Insert Merge field and select First Name. And once your message is ready, make sure to click Finish and Merge and then Send Email Messages. Enter the Merge field, in our case it's Email, which matches our column C in Excel, which also has a heading of Email. Then add the subject for the email, and then click OK. Outlook will open and queue personalized emails for each of your contacts. Most professionals eventually face the challenge of creating a clean, consistent email signature in Microsoft Outlook. Whether you're emailing clients, professors, recruiters, or team members, a well-designed signature makes you look more credible, polished, and easy to reach. Let me walk you through how to add and set up professional signature in Outlook, and more importantly, how to design one that works across devices and reflects your role. Let's start by opening Outlook and getting to the signature settings. Click on File, then Options, then Mail, and finally Signatures. This is where your email signatures are managed, and you can have different ones for work, personal, or specific roles. To create a new signature, click New and give your signature name. For example, you might call it Work, Internship, or Client Email. This helps keep things organized if you use more than one. Keep in mind that not all signatures are good. Take a close look at this particular example for Jessica. It has too many emojis, vague job title, and unnecessary fluff. It distracts from your message. Now, let's create a clean professional version. We will start with the essentials. Your name, your title, your company if it's relevant, and a couple of ways to reach you, usually a phone number and a website and LinkedIn. Here's what you will notice. The layout is left aligned. There is only one emoji used, if any. Fonts that are used are very basic, nothing custom or hard to read. And it's readable on the desktop and mobile. Here are three tips for you to build professional signature. Use maximum of five or six lines. Stick to one color palette and make sure to test it on mobile device later. If you represent the company or want to reinforce your brand, you can insert a small logo or image, but only if it's professionally formatted. Click on the image icon, choose your PNG or JPEG file, and resize it to fit naturally beside or below your name. Now let's set signature as default and test it. Under Choose Default Signature, you can assign newly created signatures to the new messages and optionally to the replies and forwards. Now let's test it. Every time you click the new email, it should show up in the new email message. Let me show you some other examples of email signatures tailored for different positions. Here's the example for corporate manager. And here's the example for the student who might be applying for the internship. And here's the example for freelancer or creative professional. Notice that each one of the signatures is tailored in tone and content while following the same structure. Short, clean, and scannable. Here's the important tip for you. Before you adopt new signature, make sure to send yourself a test email. Open it on your phone and computer, and make sure a link works, test wraps properly, and nothing appears distorted. Your signature is the powerful microbrand. Done well, it creates trust, professionalism, and consistency every time you hit send. Very often, you'll find yourself needing to navigate quickly between mail, calendar, contacts, and tasks in Outlook. In recent updates, Microsoft moved the navigation bar from its traditional bottom position to the top left corner. This change was meant to create a consistent experience across all Microsoft 365 apps, but not everyone finds it helpful. Why you might consider the bottom left position for navigation bar? 
It is compact, centered with an easy reach, and works well for traditional workflows. If you think that the bottom bar fits your workflow better, here's how to restore it. In Outlook, go to File Options. In the Options window, go to Advanced. Scroll to the Outlook pane section, and then check the bar that says Show Apps in Outlook. Click OK to restart the Outlook. Once Outlook is restarted, you see the navigation bar in the bottom left corner. Bottom left position is faster for mouse-based navigation, especially if you focused on core features like email, calendar, or tasks. The bottom bar can streamline your workflow and reduce visual friction. If you found this content helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Online Training for Everyone. Have a great day!